Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. So I know I always say this, that I work with college students, but I'm always working with people who are asking about God's will in their lives. Like, and I find this across the board, not just college students, but so many of us, we want certainty. We all want certainty when it comes to following God. And so we think, okay, God, why isn't God more clear with what he wants me to do? thinking about this because I was reading um, Exodus chapter 40 just the other day and it's the last chapter of the book of Exodus and what it describes is this it describes how Moses went to the meeting tent what happened was here's the people of Israel they're in the wilderness and Moses when he said whenever the the cloud of glory the, the Shekinah cloud that you know the, the glory of the Lord came down upon the tent then the, they would go worship when the tent, when the cloud the Shekinah cloud that glory cloud moved went up and then moved they would follow it they would follow it they would follow it and I was thinking about this and thinking, okay, so we look back on the story and we think, oh my gosh, that'd be so great because, you know, here, here's God very, being very, very clear about, okay, get up and move now. Okay, get up and pray now. But I'm thinking about this and thinking, wait a second. <laughs> there were probably days, weeks, maybe months or years where the cloud didn't move, where, where there was no clear indication of, okay, it's now time to pack up everyone and now let's keep wandering in the wilderness. When the cloud just stayed there, or maybe the cloud seemed absent. We want certainty. I thought about this. In those moments, there was no certainty. In the moments, there was no clarity as far as like, where should we go now? In fact, in those moments, it was, okay, it's clear. The clarity was, stay here. The certainty was, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. But they had to wait. They had to wait for the Lord to say, okay, now move. I think a lot of times we say, I want certainty or I want clarity. What we mean is we want God's constant, like, yep, take another step. Mm -hmm. Yep, take another step, take another step. Constantly kind of like guiding us as opposed to God saying, okay, I'm speaking in clarity. Clarity, clarity. God's never going to ask you to make decisions based off of what you don't know. He's going to ask you to make decisions based off of what you do know, based off of what he has revealed. What he has revealed. What he has revealed. He's revealed to you the commandments. You already know what it is to have an honorable life. He's revealed to you the truth of the church. He's revealed to you the sacraments. He's revealed to you the Beatitudes. Jesus Christ has revealed to us the way God wants us to live. God will never ask you to answer a question that he hasn't asked you. God will never ask you to answer a question that he hasn't asked you. Where would you go next, God? Well, don't worry. I'm not asking you to move anywhere. Here's the Shekinah glory cloud, right? I'm not asking you to go anywhere. Just stay where you are. Where you are. Here's my invitation for you today: is to be content and confident to live in uncertainty. You know what He wants you to do. Micah, in chapter six, says this: You've been told, O oh man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you: to do good, to love justice, and to walk humbly with your God. God has already revealed to you, here's what you're supposed to do right now. And when he calls you to move forward, I'm promising you, he will always speak in clarity. And that question will always have confirmation. 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 
in chapter one of Luke's gospel. In one of the most incredible calls in the history of humanity, the angel Gabriel was sent to a town of Nazareth to visit Mary. Mary. Mary says, ultimately, she says, be it done unto me according to your word. And I think this is amazing. Mary, after she asks a clarifying question, which is good, then she says, behold, I'm the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done unto me according to your word. The very next line says, then the angel departed from her. It was just revealed to Mary that she was called to be the mother of God. 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 She answered that question, and then the angel departed from her. See, we want certainty. But God's certainty is not, okay, here's what you do next, here's what you do next, here's what you do next. God's certainty is, I will be with you. I will be with you. Take that next step and continue to walk until I tell you to stop. You know what God wants you to do today. He's already revealed it. And if he hasn't revealed to you what he wants you to do with your whole life, then don't worry. You don't have to answer a question that God hasn't asked yet. Our certainty is not that he tells us what to do every single step. Our certainty is that he is with us. And God is with you. Jesus is the Lord of my life. I think it means a lot of things, but one of the things that it absolutely means is that, I'll say other churchy words, it means that he has dominion over my life. My life, my life, my life. So if he's the Lord, right, then he, he has dominion. If he's the Lord, he gets to be the Lord over everything that I have and everything that I am. To surrender to the Lord. To the Lord. give him access to every part of our lives. Sometimes we think that like, you know, what are your burdens? Give them to the Lord. What are you struggling with? Give it to the Lord. What are your blessings, your strengths? Give them to the Lord. And sometimes we have the idea, the mentality is that when we give it to God, he takes it. Like when we give it to God, then we no longer have it. That is not, sometimes, let me clarify. Sometimes that's what happens, right? We give something to the Lord and he, takes it away. What a gift. <laughs> Sometimes we give God our, our sufferings, our sorrows, and he actually can take those sufferings away. He can take those sorrows away. When we give things to the Lord, when we, when we like offer those things to the Lord, oftentimes he doesn't take it away. So what are we doing when we give it to him? Well, again, as I said, 
were giving him access to it. This has been a teaching that has been so profound in my life when I understood, oh, here's what's happening. Because I was waiting for God to take it away. I was saying, okay, God, I'm struggling with this. and I just can't seem to like move forward in this. Here, take it. And I still have it. I'm like, wait, did that not work? Did that not actually give it to him? He took it, so he has access to it now. So now I'm not the only one carrying it. And for, so now it's not mine to own. It's not mine to possess. It's not mine to claim. I've said, okay, actually, God, it's yours now. Yours now. Yours now. Think of any deep, profound relationship in your life. So here's the relationship of spouses. Here's the relationship of parents to their children. And you say as a parent, okay, Lord, I give my daughter to you, I give my child to you, I give my son to you. And we sometimes think it's like, okay, now we're waiting like Abraham and Isaac, like, oh, what are you gonna do with him? What are you gonna do with her? You're gonna take her away. And it's like, no, 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 that's not the point. The point is what you're doing is you're saying, Lord, I trust you so much. Thy will be done in their life. Because I realized that I can't control the life of my child, and in fact, I can't even protect them from the, the slings and arrows of our ages. I can't con protect them from the tragedies and travesties of life. But I can entrust them to you. I can place them under your dominion. And yes, I'm still going to love them, still going to protect and feed, and all those things that I need to do as a parent. But now they're yours, meaning you, Lord, have access to them. And you have access to the relationship that I have with them. And so in doing that, I don't have them less, but you, God, have them more. I say, okay, God, you've given me all these gifts. Maybe you have some strengths. Maybe you have some talents. And to say, okay, God, I surrendered them to you. I, I give them to you. He doesn't take them away. So no, <laughs> you're a great singer. Now, now I can no longer sing your Ariel who lost her voice. It's not that kind of thing. It's now, God, this is yours. Use it however you want. We can also do this, and this is so powerful again in my life, where there are some situations in my life that I face that I'm like, God, I can't do anything about this. I'm literally powerless in the face of this thing. What do we do? We say, okay, God, I surrender this to you. I, Lord, you get to be, you get to have dominion. You get to be the Lord over my brokenness. God, you get to be the Lord over my sin. What are we doing there? God, you have access to this. And, and this was so profound. When I had those situations in my life and have them in my life, where I cannot change them. I can't fix this on my own. In fact, it might even be, I don't even know, but it might even be unfixable. So I say, okay, God, I place this under your dominion. I place this under your Lordship. I surrender this to you.
I still have to act with it. I still have to work with it. I still have to even suffer the consequences from it. And yet, I'm not doing it on my own. Nothing given to God is ever wasted. And what a gift. What an incredible, incredible gift that in Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, nothing given to God is ever, ever wasted. Here's the God of the universe. And what he wants is for us to surrender our hearts to him and even to surrender those people that we love. Not that he takes them away, but that he <sighs> extends his protection. He extends his love. He extends his dominion, his lordship over them and over our relationship with. My invitation, ah, place yourself. Especially, here's the thing, if you're facing something difficult, something overwhelming, something that you can't change on your own, to be able to say today, okay, God, I surrender this to you. I trust you. You have access to it. You are the Lord. Lord. So um, here's one of the realities of life is that it can get really tough. You might be watching this or listening to this in a place where life is, is pretty overwhelming, where life is your circumstances might even be beyond your control. control. Like you might be in a place right now where you can't affect or can't tra transform or change your circumstances. They might be someone's fault. Like it could be that someone has done something to you. Uh, it could be your own fault. Maybe you've done something in your life, made some decisions that just like, like wow, and here I am now. Now I'm stuck. Now I'm stuck. Now I'm stuck. Now I'm stuck. There was a, a professor, Dr. Seligman, I believe his name is, um, who did this experiment on learned helplessness. But he put these animals in a place where no matter what they did, they couldn't affect their circumstances. And so then he took them into a, brought them into a situation where they could. All they would have to do is just move. They were in a situation that no matter what they did, they couldn't escape, they couldn't change their circumstances. And then he brought them into a situation where they could, but they had learned that they were helpless. And so they didn't move, even though they were in a place of discomfort, a place of pain, they had learned that no matter what I do, it doesn't get any better. And sometimes people are in that kind of situation too where it's like, I fought and I fought and I fought. I tried to change things and I couldn't change them. I mean, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't be affected. And so now I just kind of like throw up my hands and say, I mean, that, that's what it is. That's my life now. My life now. My life now. But you still have agency. I love that term agency. You still have agency. You still can actually affect act on your circumstances. You can act on your environment. You and I are still free to make decisions. Now, if say you're really, really sick, uh, say maybe you're in an accident and you're paralyzed, say um, I have cancer or something like this, you might not be able to get rid of the cancer. You might not be able to be unparalyzed. You might uh, say someone you love has promised their life to you and that they've left, they've left you. Um, you might not be able to change that reality that they're now part of your life again. But that doesn't mean you don't have agency still. I, just because I can't do everything doesn't mean I can't do anything. 
That's the first thing. Keep in mind. Keep in mind. The key area where you and I have the most agency, the key area where you and I have the most influence is our heart. Heart. Circumstances. There are many situations. There are many ways in that life can 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 lead us to become bitter. That our circumstances can lead us to begin to resent others, resent our our situation, resent ourselves, resent our own past choices. And here's my invitation to everyone who's watching this or listening to this: Do everything absolutely that you possibly can that's within your power. You have agency with that's within your power to resist bitterness. I might not be able to change my circumstances. Your, my your circumstances, your circumstances might, might be the kind that just are, are, again, overwhelming. But as long as your heart remains free of bitterness, as long as your heart remains free of resentment, you remain free. submitting himself to the cross. He's submitting himself to the Roman government. He's submitting himself to, to torture. He's submitting himself to these, this environment, to the circumstances. Not his will, but the Father's will. And what he did in all of that is he remained free of bitterness. He remained free of resentment all the way to the point where he could freely say from the cross, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they're doing. the callous, if you acknowledge the bitterness, if you acknowledge the, the resentment, you have a task and that task is to do everything you can to be free. Jesus, um, I have this bitterness in my heart and um, I can't get rid of it on my own. 
you know, the circumstances in my life and I cannot get rid of them on my own. I have this, this situation and I can't change it on my own. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place it under your dominion. Lord Jesus, you're the Lord. Lord, right? L-O-R-D. You are the Lord. That means that you're the king. That means you have dominion. That means you have sovereignty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my bitter heart, place it under your sovereignty. Your sovereignty. Your sovereignty. heart in some ways, you might get hurt again. But even then, even then, you can be wise, you have agency, and it's worth it to have a heart that can be wounded. Uh, so I recently got an email from a young man who came to me with a problem, and the problem was he really likes permanence. He dislikes change. And he was saying specifically, he doesn't like when relationships change. He would, would like relationships to be permanent, like with his family. And he said, in particular, with this young woman that I would love to get married to. idea that like you know um, the relationship could end or even if in death you know there's no marriage in heaven so would our relationship end even there I'm like you're getting way ahead of yourself dude but be that as it may actually I was really I, I warned him I said in my response I was I said I'm feeling kind of snarky right now and so my initial response to your email is gonna sound really kind of snarky right now because my initial response was yeah you have a tough time dealing with change to get over that stuff because life is change. truth, right? Life is change. about this even biologically. To be alive means you're growing. If you stop growing, you begin decaying. To grow is to change. If I have a really tough time with change, then I'm going to need to come face to face with that and I'm gonna to need to change my perspective. So many of us, right, we, we, we are prevention oriented. Just, 
I just want to hold on what I got. I'm ra I'd rather just kind of keep what I have as opposed to really working for or risking to get some more. So we're more, a lot of times, prevention oriented than we are promotion oriented. Promotion -oriented. If we like what we have, we don't want to lose it. Problem, you're going to lose it. I mean, and again, this is me being snarky a little bit, I apologize. But we know every relationship that we have in our lives will come to an end. <laughs> I know, but everyone you and I know are ultimately going to die. We're going to die. We're going to die. we have in this life will end in this life. In this life. cause us grief and that can cause us pain absolutely absolutely but we also have to be really honest about that and recognize that okay what does that mean with me moving forward if I'm loss averse like if I'm more prevention oriented do I just end up then like clutching these things or these people these relationships to my chest in the fear of losing her This guy, what he was writing was totally true. He's like, I have these good people in my life. I want to hold on to them. So if you're someone who's risk averse, right? If you're someone who's like prevention oriented and you hear me saying like, yeah, get over it, dude, or lady or whatever, um, you should just be okay with losing these things. Not necessarily. It's really good that you recognize the goods in your life. More people need to be like you. Actually, more of us need to be more grateful. It's the passing nature of those people. It's the passing nature of this good world that should give rise to gratitude. is at some point going to end, knowing that at some point that's going to either be taken away, given away, or just, will just end, should give rise to a grateful heart. I have it now, but I have this relationship now. And just to be, again, please be grateful for that kind of thing. Knowing that right now, in the middle of this video, if you have a mom or a dad, you can call them up right now. Wow, why not do that? If you have a son or daughter, if you have a friend, a brother or sister, contact them right now. You can reach out to them right now. Because this world is good, we can be tempted to place all our hopes on this world. Because relationships in your life are good, we can be tempted to put all of our hope in those relationships. Because this world is good, we can be tempted to live as if this world is all there is.
to know that it's all gonna end should make us wise. It should make us not only value what we have when we have it, gratitude and whatnot, but it should also remind us that I can't put all my hope in this world. I have to find, if, I'm gonna, if there's gonna be meaning in anything, it's gonna be in what's permanent. In fact, the church even, even mentions this in a couple different prayers. It says, Lord, help us to use the goods of this passing world so as to live forever for the things that endure, that eternally endure, that live forever, that, that exist forever. So God, these gifts you've given me, the relationships you've given me, thank you so much. Help me to enter into them in such a way that I take hold of what eternally endures. That's wisdom. Enter into or use the goods of this world for the goods that will never end. And the question is, wait, how come God would put this desire in my heart that he didn't want fulfilled? have to have the kind of a maybe possibly the hard word first word about desires our desires are not predictors of the future that's just bottom line our desires are not predictors of the future and they actually aren't even the voice of God right so just I know there's a lot of good things about discernment of our desires so our, des our desires are not bad and as Christians we're not we're not supposed to like kill our desires or quench our desires we're, we're meant to attend this is the second part we're meant to attend to our desires like so we we examine them and look at them and say okay so what is being revealed in this desire, desire. desire. so just because the fact that oh I'm really attracted to this one individual that doesn't mean, or I desire a relationship with them, that doesn't mean that that's what's supposed to happen. Again, it's not a predictor of the future. It's not necessarily the voice of God. But what I want to do is I want to say, okay, wait, what's going on inside of me that, what do I desire? What is it that I'm desiring? I remember, uh, maybe I shared this story before. When Houston, uh, when she was a young girl, she has an older aunt, cousin, very famous singer. Um, and she's just going to her auntie or her cousin and said, hey, I want to be a singer too. And the question, the clarification question that she was asked was, okay, do you want to sing or do you want to be a singer? Because if you want to sing, you love singing, uh, the church choir is a great place and you have a beautiful voice and you'll have the solo every Sunday. Like if you want to sing, you can sing there. Or do you want to be a singer? which means you're gonna live a certain kind of life and probably scrape to make ends meet. And you're gonna live this life of just like, you know, singing again, again, day after day, after day, after day. You know, you're gonna to have to live a certain kind of, so what is it you really want? I just desire to sing. Mm -mm. Attend to that desire, because it's gonna reveal a little bit more. Oh, I don't just wanna sing. I wanna live this life of an entertainer, of a singer. Like, okay, like, okay. Okay, what is this revealing about my heart? What is this revealing of what is this revealing about what I really, really want? So, um, in this gal situation and so many of our situations, like, okay, I'm attracted to this guy. That must mean that I should wait for him. Well, two things. One is, no, it doesn't. <laughs> flat out, flat out, flat out, flat out. It probably means that you are attracted to the good, the true and the beautiful. Here's a guy who is, seems good and he's pursuing the Lord. It is really good for you to be attracted to that kind of person. Um, but why does it keep growing like this if I'm not meant for this person? Well, it keeps growing because whenever you go to prayer and discern and talk to the Lord about um, your vocation, he keeps coming up. Yeah, why does he keep coming up? It's not from God. Because you keep bringing him up, bringing him right? Up. Amen? Can I get the little retweet? That's what happens in our lives. If I keep bringing back the same stuff to the Lord, why do I want it more? Because I keep feeding it. 
that's, that's, not, that's not me saying that someone's being silly if they do that. It's being normal, it's being human if we do that. The reality is, because that desire has grown, does not reveal that that's God's will. It just reveals that I've been placing a lot of my heart into it. So, desires could be good. I could desire good things, I could desire bad things. That's almost irrelevant. The question is, what is that telling me, not about the future, not about necessarily even God's will, what is that telling me about me? About me. God want me to attend to when I tend to those desires and say, oh, it reveals that I really long for X. Okay, what am I really longing for at the bottom of it? it Whitney Houston, I just want to sing. I want to be a famous singer. So I, I desire fame. I desire notoriety. I desire uh, recognition, not just in my local community, but whatever. You know what I'm saying? Our desires, good, bad, doesn't matter. They are not, they are not crystal ball. <laughs> they are not necessarily the voice of God. I do is I take those desires, I attend to them, I try to understand them, where they're coming from, what they are, and what they're pointing to. They're pointing to. And if I can do that over, over time, then I can say, God revealed through my desires that, yeah, I was called to the marriage and family, or God revealed through my desires I was called to the priesthood, or to enter the convent, or I was called through my desires to enter this, this particular field. You have a good heart? Don't trust it. You have desires, don't trust them, um, but attend to them and uh, let the Lord unfold. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Apparently, that's all I have for you today. From all of us here to Sense Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless.